Mr. Jordan, when, um, when you appeared before the Rules Committee earlier this year in January, um, I asked you to say five simple words. Uh, the election was not stolen. And you were unwilling to say them then. Can you, can you say those five words? I've never said it was stolen, Mr. Chairman. I'll give you the same no. answer. Never said it was. I said we should investigate it. I said on January 6th, uh, when the electoral votes were counted, that Joe Biden is President of the United States. And if you got a problem with that, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. The real question is, why, why don't you guys want to investigate what happened? You said a lot of words just now, but unfortunately, you're still unwilling to say those five simple words. And I think that's incredibly important, um, you know, pushing debunk conspiracy theories and not pushing and adding conspiracy fuel theories. to the fire when it comes to Your Mr. obsession Mr. with there. five words you know, is pretty we, uh, ridiculous you know, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, when we, the, this works better. I mean, I'll let you speak, and then you can let me speak, and that's the way we work it here. But, uh, you know, we, we saw on January 6th how misinformation could lead some people to violence and um, ultimately endanger our democracy. Mr. Jordan, on, on July 27th, you were asked by Brett Baer on Fox News if you talked to the former president on January 6th, and you you didn't give a clear answer. You I said, did, did. I you, clear. you said, and I quote, I've talked to the president so many, I can't remember all the days I've talked to him, but I've certainly talked to the president, end quote. The next day, on July 28th, you confirmed to Spectrum News that you spoke with the former president on January 6th. When yep. asked by a Spectrum News reporter, Taylor Popolars, whether you spoke to the president before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked, you said, and I quote, I spoke with him that day, after, I think after, I don't know if I spoke with him the, the morning in the morning or not. I just don't know. I have to get back to you. I don't, I don't know when those conversations happened, end quote. Yep. So my question is, you've had 84 days since that interview to go back and check the record. So when did you speak of with course. the former president on January 6th? Did you of talk to the former president before, during, or after the attack on the Capitol? Of course I've it, talked to the president. All three? Of course I've talked to the president. I've been clear about that. I talk to him all the time. Um, this is not about me, Mr. Chairman. I know you want to make it about me. You want to make it about uh, individuals, uh, other individuals. But this is about the lack of a proper security presence that day. That's what this committee, if this committee is going to do something that's worthwhile, that's what they should be investigating. Of course I talked to the president. I talked to him that day. I've been clear about that. I don't recall the number of times. But it's not about me. I know you want to make it about that, no, I, but this is about the, why wasn't, how about but, this, why but, wasn't but, the but, National Guard but, here but, that but, day, Mr. Chairman? If I can, re, if I can reclaim my time, I just want to. Do you ask that question? Have you asked the Speaker no, why wasn't the National Guard here? No, my, my question to you, I'm asking the question to you. And, and the I gave you the was, answer. Did you, did you talk to the President, former President, before, during, or after the attack on the Capitol? Or was it all three? The reason why I ask is, you know, you had 84 days since you said you couldn't remember, and you would check, so what, if you could just clarify the record, was it before, during, or after the attack on the I talked Capitol? to the President after the attack. So not before or during? Right. Okay, and you would, um, and you would, I've been clear about that. Well, but I, hey, I, let me ask you a question. You brought up January 6th. But yeah, but my my understanding is that you all, you 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 said to a reporter from Political that you spoke to him during. So is, so is now after the attack? Or are you during? No, I did not speak to the president uh, during the attack. Um, so you admitted to speaking to the former president on January sixth, the same day you voted to overturn the election. You know, facts be damned. And although you've routinely suggested that you're just another member of Congress. Speaking with the president, your name comes up again and again in regards to efforts to overturn the election. Um, and um, there is even reporting that back on December 27th, then President Trump spoke with then acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and others to discuss how to reverse Biden's win. An, an official who was on that call, Richard Dunahue, notes you, Mr. Jordan, as a lawmaker who was referenced. This is the same meeting where President Trump told the Justice Department, according to handwritten notes by Mr. Dunahue, and I quote, just say that the election was corrupt and, quote, leave the rest to me and the, uh, and, and, and the, and the, our, and the, and the, our congressman. Did you discuss with President Trump a coordinated effort to overturn the results of the election? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Of course not. But you brought up January 6th, Mr. Chairman? With what? You brought up January 6th, and you said we tried to overturn the results of the election by yes. simply objecting? No, I just know you said by, by objecting. I, well, I, I, well I, I, here's, what, here's what I know. 
And I say, I, and I, I don't know. Okay, well, I'll I, get, I, don't, I hope I get a chance to yeah, respond you, you, at some point. You, I, you know, I just don't know of another member of Congress who is as deeply enmeshed in all of this as you are, and apparently you're unwilling to give some of the more specific answers to this committee today. Um, I guess, are you willing to tell the select committee what you know uh, about events leading up to during? I've been clear all along. I've got nothing to hide. I've been straightforward all along. And just, and just so you know, I mean, I, um, I'm looking here. Um, this is a political story here. Uh, it, it quotes you. It says, look, I definitely spoke to the president that day. I don't recall. I know it was more than once. I just don't recall the times. This is to Olivia Beavers. And you later said that I'm sure that one of the Trump-involved calls took place in the safe room because we were in that room forever. I mean, that's what you... Yeah, after the thing. That's what I said. But what yeah, does this have to do with what does this have to do with Steve Bannon? What does this have to do with Steve Bannon's no, contempt? I'm, I'm just you, you. I thought that's why we were here. You, you, yeah. Well, in your in your opening, you didn't mention Steve Bannon, Mr. Gates. Did. No, you I mentioned. I guess I did mention Steve Bannon's Bannon. name. You, I mentioned him very you first. About inflation. No, I did. I, no, I did, and I said there are four batches yeah. of subpoena. The first batch, Bannon, Meadows, Patel, Scavino. First name I mentioned. Yeah. You got to yeah. go back. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm I, sure I, the reporter can bring up the record. Yeah, I think I, I think what I come away listening to your opening statement is that you're more outraged by people asking questions. Not uh, at all. Then police being. Beaten I'm more here. outraged by the and attack the police, on people's the, the First police Amendment police liberties being here um, on January 6th uh, and the lives of, of the people who work for all of us being at risk. Um, and, um, and January so, 6th, Mr. Chairman, if, can I respond to something? Yeah, you may. January 6th, 2017, guess who the first person was to object to counting the electoral uh, uh, college results for Mr. Trump? Guess who it was? It was me. It was you. Guess right. which state? Alabama. Which state? Alabama, a state President Trump won by 30 points. So you can object to Alabama no. No. on January 6th, 2017, and for four years... You guys can go after President Trump, the Trump Russia investigation. You can do that for four years. In October, in October of 2020, Hillary Clinton said just weeks before the election, she said the 2016 election was stolen for her. So you guys can investigate that so all based on lies so, for four years. So We're not allowed to ask questions no, for four no, minutes no, about the 2020 no, election. No, We're not allowed to object to Pennsylvania where they unconstitutionally change their election law. But you can object right, to Alabama? No, well, let, 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 I'm glad you raised that issue. All right. Um, Mr. Raskin can object so to Florida? I, 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 so, all right, I, it's my time now. So I raise the issue He's of Russian right. interference in our election. Um, I raise, also raise the issue of voter suppression, which was a real concern in that election. Um, I took the action, and I, and I said at the time, it's a symbolic action. I had no senator to join with me, but I wanted to make sure that the issue of voter suppression and potential Russia... So it's okay Russia, for you to do it. Um, excuse me, please. There, there's a difference here. Uh, I, did not, I did not organize a rally or have meetings to actually <laughs> plan, plan and un undermine an election. <laughs> I didn't either. And the there's Capitol a, wasn't attacked before I made my objection. There's a difference. No, no, the difference the, the being where Democrats are allowed, but Republicans well, Mr. Jordan, aren't. If you don't want to testify here, you, you're, you're free to leave. I, well, you I mean, you I'm, keep I'm, I'm saying just, all kinds of things. Don't no, give me a chance I mean, to respond. Seriously. I, well, I've given you a chance to respond. You won't let me get a question out. All right. Go ahead. All right? Ask your question. Uh, the Capitol wasn't attacked. Uh, before or after I made my objection. The vice president wasn't rushed to a secure location. Uh, his life wasn't threatened. President Obama uh, at the time did, you know, didn't tweet out a video saying he loved rioters. There wasn't even a, a vote on my objection. So there's a false equivalency here as an attempt to whitewash what happened on that terrible, terrible day. I'm not trying to I was the last that. person off the floor on uh, January 6th. Um, and I came face to face with these people in the speaker's gallery. And I will tell you, I was you, want me, if, you want to, if you want me to describe what evil looks like, it's looking to those faces, those people who, while three p police officers were in front of the door trying to protect all of us, they were smashing the windows open uh, to get at people. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the notion that there's all this outrage today over people asking questions, and there's not outrage over the fact that the police, the Capitol Police who are who are here to protect us and who do protect us every day were beaten. Um, you know, people lost their lives. Others, other, others' lives were threatened. The fact that somehow we asking questions about trying to figure out why did this happen, who is responsible, that somehow that that is a bad thing. Give me a break. Give me a break. I mean, and I, you know, and I, and I you know, we, I, someone, one of you mentioned political theater. You know, uh, I don't, if I don't, this is a political theater, I don't know what is, but let me just say one of the most genuine statements that I have heard uttered um, in the Capitol was by 
uh, Vice Chair Cheney, um, who, to her credit, uh, is, 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 is embracing the truth uh, and asking her Republican colleagues to join with her in making sure that the questions are answered in a way so we, the American people know what happens. So it never, ever, ever happens again. Uh, I mean, all of us are concerned uh, about the future of our democracy in the aftermath of what happened. We don't ever want to see that happen again. Uh, so th that's what this is all about. Uh, so we could talk about inflation, we could talk about the border, you could talk about whatever you want to talk about. Fine. You're at the Rules Committee, you could talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. But the bottom line is, I think what we're doing here today um, is absolutely necessary. Can I respond? You may. I'm not trying to whitewash anything. Republicans have been consistent. We have condemned violence every stinking time it happened. We condemned it on January 6th, and 600 people are being prosecuted and held accountable for what they did wrong, as well they should be. But it would have been nice if you guys would have condemned the violence in the summer of 2020 instead of making statements like my colleague just read. It would have been nice. Instead of the Vice President of the United States raising money to bail rioters out of jail, it would have been nice if you'd have done that. No, no, no. This, this double standard, you guys get to, you get to say all the things you did about Trump for four years. You get to have the summer of 2020 and call it peaceful protest. We condemn violence every single time. It had been nice if you guys had done the same. I am so sick of the double standard. That's Americans true. are so sick of the well, double standard. Well, I think many of us did condemn it. Uh, we, I condemn violence wherever it may occur. But, you know, let me just say this. You can yell and scream as much as you want. The bottom line is... No, I'm not we, yelling and screaming. I'm, 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 I'm reflecting the where the American, is, people the American people are. They've had it with the double the standard. American people saw You're allowed to object. We're not. No, you could object. You, that's not, that's not the, the issue is not whether or not you, uh, the, you, you have raised an objection. Mr. Jordan, the issue is what transpired that day. The issue, no, the issue is that, that after all, we had nothing the to issue do with that, that. that after well, I, well, we'll see. We'll see what the, what the, what the, what the investigation you leads. Guys are, but guys after all of this time, mind. still, you know, you cannot say those five words that the election was not stolen. Um, with that, I happy to yield to the gentleman from um, uh, Oklahoma. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Americans want safer streets, affordable gas, and freedom. Instead, Democrats give us record crime levels, record inflation, and another bill attacking President Trump. Sponsored by the guy who spent years misleading the Congress and, more importantly, the country. On Trump-Russia investigation, on the Mueller investigation, on impeachments. Remember when the sponsor of the bill said, that his office didn't meet with the whistleblower? Found out that wasn't true. Remember when the sponsor of the bill told us that we would hear from the whistleblower during impeachment? We'd actually have real process instead of having hearings and depositions in the basement, in the bunker of the Capitol? Remember when the sponsor told us this? That there was more than circumstantial evidence that President Trump colluded with Russia? That turned out to be false. Bob Mueller said it was false. Everyone knew it was false. In fact, it was such baloney, even the Washington Post, even the Washington Post has had to retract and change things from stories because they said, oh, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of false information in that dossier that they used to go spy on President Trump's campaign. And I think this is important to understand. Sponsor this legislation wasn't just any member of Congress. Mr. Speaker, he wasn't just any chairman of a committee in Congress. He was the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, the committee that gets additional information from anyone else in the country making those claims that were not accurate. So maybe instead of having another bill that attacks President Trump because Democrats are afraid he's going to run and he's going to win in 2024, so they want to do everything they can to attack him. Maybe instead of another bill attacking President Trump, we should actually focus on things that the American people care about. You know, you can attack President Trump all you want. I know one thing. A year ago, the border was secure. Sure was. A year ago, cities were safe. Safer than they are today. A year ago, we didn't have a 31-year high inflation. We actually had wages going up, real wages. A year ago... A year ago, we didn't have a Department of Justice, Department of Justice attacking moms and dads, putting a label, a designation, a threat tag 
on parents who simply go to school board meetings and speak out against a racist hate America curriculum. No, we didn't have that a year ago. But you guys can keep attacking the president all you want. Not addressing the issues that the American people care about. We're going to speak about the issues they care about. We're going to try to do everything we can to slow down your crazy agenda that is driving up the price of everything. We're going to speak out against and do everything we can to make sure the Department of Justice quits attacking parents. God bless the whistleblower who came forward and gave us the information. Sent from the counterterrorism division of the FBI. We could be dealing with that issue today. We could be holding the Attorney General accountable, the Justice Department accountable for what they're doing. No, no, no. We're going to attack President Trump again. Democrats, that's the only thing they can do because they can't talk about anything else. I hope we defeat this bill. Yield back my time.